So I was really cruel and unfair for putting a math problem in this week's silly poll, so we're gonna solve it together. So we have a word problem here. What we're trying to find is the number of brain cells that Bill and Jack have between them. So it's a pretty simple equation. We just need to find out what B and J are, and we are given equations for them. So let's start with B, shall we? So we are told that the total amount of functional tissue in Bill's head is equal to the sum of the first 27 numbers of the geometric sequence, and we can stop right there because we already have a handy equation that tells us the sum of any number of terms in a geometric sequence, and that is the sum of n number of terms is equal to the first term times 1 minus r to the nth power over 1 minus r. So we already know what n is. It's going to be 27 because we want the first 27 numbers. But what's a1 and what is r? Well, the generic um, equation for a geometric sequence is the nth term is equal to the first term times r to the n minus 1. And if we take a look at the equation that we are given here, we can see that this lines up to this um, equation because we have a n and then we have this number and then 3 to the n minus 1. So 3 must be our r and our first term must be 2 divided by 3 to the 27th minus 1. So then all we need to do is plug in our numbers. So we have um, the sum of the first 27 numbers is equal to 2 divided by 3 to the 27th minus 1. That's a. Then we have 1 minus 3 to the 27th over 1 minus 3. And if we plug this whole equation into our calculator, we end up with the grand total of 1. Yeah. So let's move on to the second part of the equation and find out how many brain cells Jack has. So <laughs> we read this. Jack possesses a combined number of blah, 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 blah to the total of letters. We hate letters. Anyways, it, it's actually not that complicated. So we have a bunch of parentheses here. So what we're going to do is start in the innermost parentheses. So we see that this is probably our innermost, like disregarding pi. Um, so this may look complicated, but we actually don't need to find any sine or cosine because we know from our identities that sine squared plus cosine squared of any angle is always equal to 1. So this is just 1. Now let's move on to our second set of parentheses. We have arc cosecant. I know. This is where, where we start to have a headache, but it's, it's okay. I promise you. So let, let's, let's break this down in parts. First, let's start, let's start with the, the arc part. Because what does that even mean? Well, normally when we have a trigonomic fun function, let's just use like sine as an example. What we do is we will input an angle and we will get a ratio of sides like one over one that's why we say like we have a triangle and the um five four and three right and this is our angle it's going to be opposite over hypotenuse that's our ratio of sides so like one would be this yeah that's that's how that works <laughs> but for arc sign it's going to be flipped and that that's all it is it's just going to be flipped so we're going to input the ratio of sides and get an angle and that's the same for like all arcs um functions it's always going to be we're inputting a ratio of sides and we're getting an angle instead of inputting an angle and getting a ratio of sides so now let's tackle the cosecant part so what, what is cosecant what what is what is that even about well cosecant of x is literally just um, the opposite of sine. So like if our sine, if we, if we put an angle into our sine function and we got the ratio of sides like 1 over 1, wait no that's a bad example, if we got the square root of 2 over 2, then the cosecant of that same angle would be just 2 over the square root of 2. We just flip these. So the reciprocal 
if, if you want to use math terms. Um, so yeah, now, now that we know all of that, how can we solve for arc cosecant? Well, first of all, we know that we're inputting a ratio of sides, so, and because our, our number is just 1, we know that the ratio of sides is going to be 1 over 1, because 1 divided by 1 is equal to 1. Now, we don't know what the arc cosecant of anything is off the top of our head, so first we're going to convert this into um, arc sine terms, because then we can start like trying to find it. So because cosecant is just the reciprocal, of um, sine, all we need to do is flip this number. But since it's 1 over 1, it's already flipped. Like, it's not going to change. It's just going to keep being 1 over 1, you know? So now we just need to find the arc sine of 1 over 1. And how we find this is we, we look at, um, well, our unit circle, if you know what that is. And we need to find the angle where the ratio of size is equal to 1 over 1. And that just happens to be a clean old 90 degrees. So we know now that this is equal to 90 degrees. So let's get rid of all that. Um, now we can move on to the next set of parentheses, which is cosine. And cosine is pretty simple. So cosine, we're just going to put in 90 degrees. And like I said, we're going to, since it's, this is not arc cosine, we're going to get a ratio of sides. So um, the cosine of 90 degrees, again, I'm going off of the unit circle. If you want to know what that is, um, look it up, Google. Organic Chemistry Tutor is amazing. You probably already know who that is. Um, bless that person. <laughs> um, anyways, the cosine of 90 degrees is zero. Cosine is zero here. So that's simple. Now we just have zero up there. So let's get rid of all this. So now we're down to arc tangent. And again, um, this is going to be tangent, just reversed. So what do we have here? We had zero. So, <clears throat> so basically, all we need to know is tangent is, is a special guy. But he's basically just sine over cosine. So if we know the sine of the angle and the cosine of the angle, we can know the tangent. And it's the same with arc arc tangent. So if we know what the ratio of sides is for this given angle, um, oh wait, yeah, sorry, this looks like theta. I draw my uh, zeros really weird, if you haven't noticed. So uh, yeah, not theta, not an angle. This is ratio of sides. So we're going to see where tangent is 0 over 1. Now where is arc tangent going to be 0 over 1? It's going to be where sine is 0 and cosine is 1. And we already know that cosine is 1 at 0 degrees, and sine is also 0 at 0 degrees. So the answer must be 0 degrees. And there's, there's no other point on the periodic table. Like, if you add 360 to this, 360 is going to be the same. But we're just going to keep it 0 to, to, for, to be the simple. To be the simple. <laughs> so... <laughs> Now we have zero degrees, and we are down to our last little set of parentheses, which is sine of zero degrees. And we already know that the sine of zero degrees, sine is zero there. So our answer is zero brain cells. Um, so now we can just hop on back to our, our equation. We know that B is one, and now we know that J is zero. So the total number of brain cells that Bill and Jack have together is one, which really shouldn't be that surprising considering